Hey there everybody, welcome back to more Enemy Zero. The last time around we found a gun, killed an alien, ran to a second alien, and promptly lost our gun, being forced into this horribly narrow area up in the air ducts between the 4th and 5th floor of the Winter Tower. Seems that our friend Kimberly is up on the 5th floor, all we have to do is negotiate this not difficult or easily lost in maze here in the air duct. And you might be hearing a lot of beeps and boops, scaring you into submission, but thankfully I know right where we need to go. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get turned around the air ducts. Yet again, there's not a whole lot in the way of landmarks to mark where you need to go or anything really to differentiate. You pretty much have to map all that out yourself, as yet again, there's no map in game and there's no way to figure it out otherwise. But we found ourselves in somewhat of a nondescript office with some seemingly archaic computer technology that looks like a dot matrix printer over there. But maybe something important is on the computer here. Nope, there's too much high security on this particular desktop computer, but that doesn't mean that there isn't something important waiting inside. If we investigate the tower here. We do get what might be, uh, I don't know, an SD card. Some type of capture device. It's a bit hard to say, but I mean, we do have it. So there, there is that. I'm a bit bummed we can't pick up that kicking uh, mouse pad from the 90s, but... Well, there isn't too much else to investigate in this room. There's a locker waiting over here. And much like the computer we saw over there before, this apparently was just George's room, I guess. Laura really showing off the range of her emotions. Clearly, she's unhappy with George or just mad at technology. But we did pick up what we need to unlock this over in the computer. And even though this locker looks exactly like the other locker that we use the personal e card for, for some reason this one is unlocked with whatever the hell this thing is. Like I said in the last video, rarely do the locks in the game ever use the exact same key card. I'm not really sure why, but more importantly, we do find a means to defend ourselves, which is good. The bad news is that, well, it doesn't have any charge, which is obviously bad. I mean, there's no melee combat in the game, we're just stuck to shooting, so we are going to need to find some way to recharge the gun. The good news is we don't have to backtrack all the way to that initial charging station. There is another one in the air ducts, if you can believe it. That means we are going to have to venture back into the human-sized air ducts. And we are given another bit of a puzzle, I suppose, here. Even though it seems that more than likely Laura could just jump up into the air duct. She doesn't seem to want to be bothered by that. Instead, we have to use that card one more time. Now, as to why this was necessitated in being done, I, I guess it was to make sure you investigated the computer before you could ever have a chance to leave, but I don't know. It, it seems a bit silly in retrospect, I guess. But already back in the air ducts, we are assaulted yet again by beeps and boops. 
And it might make you seem or think that there's a lot of enemies in the air ducts here, but there's actually only two. The problem is that the air ducts are so close together, what you're really hearing is enemies through the nearby wall, so... Yeah, the radar can be a bit hit and miss in its reliability, but we've already gotten to the other place we need to go. It's another lovely picturesque location with lots of places to investigate and find so many easter eggs. But no, we can really only walk over to the charge station and use that. That's the only reason this room ever exists. So we can go ahead and charge the gun. But it's not as simple as last time. Yeah, we are given a keyboard and it asks for our name. And you might be inclined to just type in Laura because she is a member of the crew. Or maybe you want to give the gun a name. But what you actually want to do is give the name of the person who the gun is owned by. And... I guess the gun was owned by George, since we found it in George's locker in George's room, so... All we have to do is enter his name to deal with... This puzzle? I don't know, you never have to do this mechanic ever again in the future. It just seems... Pointless. Now there we go, we clearly are George because we knew George's name, and we knew this to be George's gun, so... Yeah, we're, we're George. Security of the future. Even though, apparently, his computer was smarter than the charging station. The good news is that, obviously, his computer is a lot more dangerous than the gun, so... There you go. Yeah, before we head out there, I just wanted to save really quick, though we don't have to see all that nonsense again. And it's time to head out into the dangerous combat of the air ducts. And it is pretty dangerous all around. As I mentioned before, the, the air duct is kind of shoved together so much that you end up having to hear beeps and boops of things that might be on the other side of the wall, or might be right in front of you. It's it's a bit hard to say. I mean, there are beeps and boops that signify, you know, something in front of you, something in behind you, or something to the left and right of you, but something could be right in front of you, but through a wall, and you probably wouldn't really be able to tell with the system of the game. The good news is that, well, I know where at least one of the aliens are in the uh, tunnels up here. The other one is a bit easier to run into. So I am trying to be a little bit cautious because, well, we are running on limited saves right now. And I will admit that the, the sound effects and the idea behind them is pretty tense early on, but this is pretty much the essence of all combat in the game, and it never ever changes, so... Well, hopefully you either get it, or you die. And yes, you really have to wait till you are point blank with the enemy before you are able to kill them, otherwise you're just wasting shots. And George's gun is apparently a bit more shittier than Mercus's gun, as it only holds two shots, as I think Mercus's gun ended up holding about four or five. The good news is that there are only two enemies up here in the air duct, so if you are 100% accurate with the gun, you can kill both the enemies without having to go back and recharge. 
Also, the other enemy is a good indicator of where we need to head, because it's standing in front of the pathway out of the air ducts. So we can use the beeping and booping as some measure of where we might have to go. Also, there was that little sound effect of the door opening. I think that was the alien triggering the door to open. It's another nice little cue. Yeah. I can honestly say that is pretty stressful and tense, and I think most games fail to do that nowadays, but it's only stressful and tense the first couple of times. But. Yeah, this is where we need to leave the air ducts, but there's some kind of barricade in the way. And there's really no interacting with items. We can't access our inventory while in this free range mode. So what you would normally have to do is use the gun to blow away this barricade, but like I said, George's gun only has two charges, so you'll have enough charges to kill the enemies, but once you reach the barricade there, you have to backtrack all the way to that charge station, which hopefully as long as you've been mapping this out by hand or keeping a good mental image of the many, many obvious telltale signs of where to go in this air duct, or maybe maybe you've been mentally saying left, right, left, right, 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 left, or however you've been making your way around the air ducts. Either way, I don't think it would have hurt the game to have something of an auto map system, but I don't know. We found our way back to the charging station. <gasps> and we do at least get the tiny favor of not having to re-enter George's name again. I guess it's a one-time security system. Though that doesn't really mean that we have to, or we can skip the 20 second long cutscene of watching her do the exact same thing. So there you go. We can now blow open that barricade, though it will be another short jaunt through the air ducts yet again. And I guess overall the environment does kind of work in a sense of, you know, setting in claustrophobia and tension that way. I mean, there's no real way to run, away, uh, run around the enemies in these situations, but really, you being as how the sound is your only way to gauge you know, where the enemies are and everything, you can be completely thrown off and end up running around in circles after circles because you think there's an enemy in front of you when in reality there's not one at all. You're just hearing something through a wall or, oh no, there actually is an enemy in front of you and now you're dead. So you get to redo this entire section over again because I didn't state it before, but whenever you're in these first person action sections here, you cannot access your saving equipment at all. All of your inventory is completely shut off outside of accessing your gun, so you are left to only be able to save when well, you might be in an elevator or you're in a charging room, but that doesn't matter. We are finally free of the air ducts, and maybe, I don't know, maybe we can finally meet up with Kimberly.
Laura. Oh, I'm so glad you're okay. So, your memory isn't too clear either, is it? I bet it's because we were forced out of hypersleep. Girl, I was expecting to wake up and see the clear blue sky of Earth. Hey, you saw it too, right? Well, I guess you really wouldn't say saw. Maybe feel is more like it. I'm telling you, something is moving around this ship. Something is happening. I wonder what's going to happen to us. Anyway, our first priority is to establish communication with the other five crew members. Yep, we finally get to meet Kimberly and not get to hear her master plan, but I'm sure it was amazing. Much like the, the graphics, they're amazing and everything. But yeah, for those that played D2, Kimberly is the exact same digital actress as was shown in that game, and she has pretty much the range of emotions and characters as she did there, but, you know, she's a different character in this game. She has her own intricate personality with her love of hip-hop music, I guess. Fu it's future hip-hop and future radical skateboarding, but... Sadly, we don't really get a chance to talk to her, and there's nothing in this room to investigate. Uh, but at least there's a computer with a few new options we can check out. No, there's nothing... I, I don't think there's anything new in the way in the information section. But there is something new waiting for us in the database. Since we are in Kimberly's room, maybe there's something that uh, will give us a little backstory in regards to Kimberly. There is this lovely single picture here. And you are supposed to win for a lot from this. It's a bit hard to tell, but that caveman next to Kimberly is Parker, who we know is very dead. We learned that in multiple cutscenes, but we also see someone back there cuddling up with Laura. So, you're supposed to infer a lot of emotion and backstory from this, but needless to say, you know, the these two ladies had their, had their bows, and we already know one of the bows is dead. But I guess Kimberly doesn't know that yet, and I'm sure we can reveal that to her in some very sensitive manner, but... Well, since we do have a, a boyfriend of our own, we haven't talked to him in a while. We might as well give him a little ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. And, I mean, if you check the personnel information, you'd find out that that uh, lovely, lovely young man is David. So let's go ahead and try to give him another ring. Laura. You're not harmed. Thank goodness. Guess you're tough enough to manage without me after all. I got hit pretty hard from that earlier jolt. The summer tower is relatively safe for now. Doesn't look like I'll be too mobile with these injuries. Could you maybe arrange it so you'll be able to head over this way? Good thing he's alright, isn't it, Laura? You know, girl, he really is a pretty dependable man. You could rely on him, you know what I mean? Um... Yeah, I guess we could rely on him. Uh, I guess that's what we're supposed to infer by him saying that we can really depend on him, but we can definitely depend on Ronnie. He's always been... Oh. Oh, Ronnie. It's so awful. Yeah, some, some, somehow, amongst all our travels, Ronnie has died unceremoniously. He did give us a few hints here and there, and that they were appreciated. He met a untimely end, and I don't know. I might as well check on Parker one last time. Yeah, there's nothing different there, but the problem is that I thought... That was supposed to be the trigger for the next, well, the next event to, to pop up, and 
Well, I don't know. If this was your first time playing, you might be confused as well. I mean, normally something is supposed to happen here whenever you look at Parker's horribly, uh, horribly dismembered corpse there. Especially considering that, I mean, clearly Kimberly was snooping over our shoulder before during our conversation with David talking about how we got a good man and everything. But yeah, she is, uh, I don't know, she's decided to go back to a catatonic state back in her seat there, so... Yeah, we can't just leave either. So we have to figure out what will trigger the next event, I guess. Clearly has to be something to do with the video phone here, as that's the only thing we can really interact with. But I decided to screw around a bit, you know, just to give you the, the real life uh, experience, I guess. Yeah, there, there's nothing new with the maps, there's nothing new with the locks. I mean, it seems that we are, we're definitely still heading to Earth, and we haven't got a new expanded map section for some reason. Floors 2 through 5 are completely a mystery, because... But yeah, what, what we really need to do is definitely something with the video phone. Can you guess what we need to do? Pro probably not. I mean, it's definitely something to do with Parker. Definitely something to do with him. I don't know, maybe, maybe he'll get up and sing a dance for us. But I decided at least to, I don't know, check out the other things. Maybe, maybe they'll trigger something. Maybe Kimberly will have some feelings about, uh, Marcus. Yep. Well, you've, uh, we've definitely been there before. It was exciting. And there's no one in Laura's room. And, yeah, George is still being kind of an asshole. That's okay, though. We'll meet him soon enough. I got hit pretty hard from that earlier, Jill. The summer tower is relatively safe for now. Doesn't look like I'll be too mobile with these injuries. Could you maybe arrange it so you'll be able to head over this way? And it seems that David is still wanting us to head over to the tower, which... Sadly, we're kind of blocked from doing until Kimberly decides to... I don't know, trigger her thing. But yeah, what we really needed to do there was just talk to David again. That, that was it. Parker! Oh, please, Parker! Ah! You know, I just had this dream. I was going to tell you about it just as soon as we reached Earth. Oh, my God. No. Can't be true. I must still be dreaming. But it was such a wonderful dream, and now this. Laura, you knew about me and Barker, right? Why? How can this be? There's no way you'll ever understand. Your lover. David. Is still alive. So yeah, that, um... That was kind of a bitchy reaction, but... Well, we need to talk to David one more time to get things going. Hey. Oh, so you do remember me. I thought you were going to be so cold as to pretend to have forgotten about me again. You know that even back on Earth, you hardly ever called me. If it hadn't been for this situation, there probably wouldn't have been any hope of you and I getting together. Maybe for us. This was a fortunate accident. Laura, as long as you reach out for me, I want to be there to support you. I really want to see you. I'm waiting. Hey, 
Hey, Laura, why don't we go to the Summer Tower? Look, I'm sorry about losing it earlier, but there's no point in being emotional at a time like this. I'm sure Parker would be upset if I gave up now. If we go to the Summer Tower and hook up with David and George, we might be able to pull something off. But, Laura, in order to get there, there's something you must do for me. And that thing we must do is insert disc two. That's right, this game was up to three different discs of just pure entertainment and technology, and Jesus Christ, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. What? Why are we with David? I mean, he, first he's telling us we can do fine on our own, but we should depend on him, and then Kimberly... Uh, Kimberly was just being a jerk. I don't even know what's going on. There's not enough story here. We can get to the Summer Tower from the Emergency Bridge. There's a nuclear reactor there, so we can't go shooting off the wrong weapons. Laura, when it comes to taking on the enemy in combat, I know what to do. Tell me, do you know what the most crucial thing is? It's to stare your enemy in the eyes and never, ever look away. Just like taking care of a baby. That's right. This time, our enemy is nothing but a spoiled little brat. <laughs> Up ahead, it's crawling with those creatures. The enemy. You stay here, okay? The door up ahead at the end of the corridor won't open unless the password is entered into this computer. The password is written in the front of the door, so I'll go up there and take a look. When I get there, I'll transmit the password. Stay here and open the door. Don't worry, it's fine. This is personal. Yeah. I want to finish them off with my own bare hands. Let's do it. You know, my husband Parker kept this little blue canary in his room on Earth. Imagine a guy with his face cuddling a canary. Pretty funny, huh? Whenever he woke up in the morning, the first thing he always did was stand in front of the birdcage by the window and feed his bird. With those massive hulking hands of his, he would gently give it food. When we got this mission, he was so upset over being separated from his bird, he broke down and cried. You would never think he was like that, huh? We ended up taking the bird outdoors and letting him go, but... Parker had regrets. He said that maybe we had let go of our little blue bird of happiness. Hey, let's drop it. I shouldn't go on like this. Parker wouldn't. So it's you. You killed him, didn't you? Where... Where are you? No, no, Kimberly! Oh, no! I have a deep emotional connection with you. Because we both have boyfriends, I guess. But yeah, so Kimberly is in danger. She decided to go off on her own because 
she has combat training against children, and she was gonna stare into the eye of the invisible creatures. I don't know. God damn, the writing is so bad, and the plot is non-existent, and the emotional ties to these characters are non-existent, but we have to feel something for them. But I will say there was an interesting touch in that, well, if you did pay attention to the direction that Kimberly was going during that cutscene, you have a pretty clear line where you need to go, otherwise you will definitely get lost and have to fight a few enemies with your possibly empty gun. We now find ourselves where, I guess, Kimberly met her grisly fate. Looks like she was completely consumed by the alien. She did leave behind her method of hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is uh, her gun, I guess. But, we... I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how to explain that characterization. We, we had no emotional connection to anyone in this game so far, and the... I don't know, the twinkling piano music didn't really make me feel any closer to Kimberly whatsoever. Though it is a bit humorous to realize that in D2, both her and Parker, or the digital actor that was Parker, were kind of in love in that game as well, and both, uh, both of them met a pretty grisly fate there as well, but... No, uh, that's, that's neither here nor there. We're making progress, and that's all that matters. We're actually about halfway through the game now. We're into the, I think, Fall Tower, where our boyfriend is, and that's where we're going to be continuing next time on Enemy Zero.